harsh divisions, harsh choices. But it was not always that way. In Hindu religious tradition, sexuality began when the god Shiva fell in love with the female aspect of himself. The sexual duality of the god and all his creation is still celebrated in classical dance. But European colonization would change that forever. When the British took India, they rewrote the rules. Diversity was made shameful and driven underground. The British being a real uptight, anal retentive colonial project, if I can use that phrase, had to bring their laws in around sexuality. And so they tried to construct non-reproductive sex as a criminal and anti-nature type of behavior. Their belief was that all sexual activity should be based around reproduction. And anything outside of reproductive sex was not considered normal. According to laws imposed throughout the British Empire, all sexual acts not open to conception were against the order of nature and punishable with life imprisonment. Long since revoked in England, these clauses have been retained in Indian law. Indian courts have now extended that even further in their, in their need to imitate the British to oral sex, mutual masturbation and thigh sex are also considered unnatural and punishable as uh, sodomic, sodomite activities. In a culture that continues to demand an outward show of Victorian rectitude, the Hindu religion still offers some refuge for those who cannot conform. They can become hijras, regarded as a third sex, neither male nor female, and estimated to number a million people. In pre-colonial times, hijras were revered and a lingering belief in the power of the Hijra blessing and the Hijra curse offer them some security on the margins of Indian life. Over two years, we followed a young man's initiation into the Hijra sisterhood, starting in a back street clinic in a provincial city. Nada Kumar was then 22 years old, and about to take the radical step that would separate him from ordinary society. For thousands of years, this procedure was carried out by untrained Hijra midwives. Fatalities were high. The operation is now illegal in India, but there are clinics willing to perform any service at a price. Nada had been saving for this moment since he was 15 years old. The Hijras call the operation a nirvan, meaning a rebirth. According to Hijra tradition, the sacrifice of the male genitalia induces feminine powers the creative powers. Forty days after the operation and Nada has recovered remarkably well. The ceremonial washing marks the ritual celebration of Nada's rebirth as a woman, a woman called Nandini, a woman with desires. Nandini is led to the altar of Santoshi Mata, a version of the Indian mother goddess, who apparently calls the Hijras to sacrifice their genitals as evidence of their devotion to her. Now purified, 
Nandini is ready for her next step. Today, Nandini is a fully fledged member of a Hijra family modeled on the Hindu guru system. 35 year old Uma, his mother and teacher to them all. What are Nandini's feelings now as she looks back on that operation? It feels good. Before, no matter how much makeup I used or what I wore, I always knew I had that male thing underneath. Now there are no more problems, but then when I used to have a bath, it was all female up to here. And when I looked down and saw that male thing, I would just sit there and cry. Now I am fully a woman. Nandini began describing the journey that eventually led her here. How as a small child she would sneak away to her room and put on her sister's clothes and makeup. When my parents found out, they would strip me naked. Is this a male thing or a female thing? They'd beat me. My mother, my father and my brothers. So much. When I was 15, I told them everything. I said I wanted to become a hijra. They ordered me out of the house saying, never come back because it will ruin our reputation. I phoned them lots of times, but they won't take my calls. When we're all together like this, I don't miss my parents. But it's when I'm alone that those feelings come back, of wanting to see them so much in spite of everything. Just to fall at their feet and ask for forgiveness. We talked until the time came for evening devotions. We learned that Nandini had graduated with a diploma in computer technology. But as a Hijra, there's no hope of using these qualifications. Devotions over. Nandini and the others take to the streets. As a hijra, you have only two choices, to beg, or if you're young and beautiful, to do business. I hate doing business, but I'd hate to beg even more. 